Hello everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I've got an old school 286 motherboard here. And uh, I don't tend to share a lot of my repairs on video and stuff like that, but this was just different, so I thought I'd show you. Uh, as you can see here, I've got this board and it says that it has a short in it. And uh, I've shown a few things about the shorts on motherboards. Now, obviously the first thing you wanna check is I went through all the slots and made sure there was no uh, gunk in there and just looked around the board physically for anything that looked bad, these tantalum capacitors being blown anything like that um so quick recap because i've done some other videos on it um before you plug in one of these old motherboards you want to um take a look at the power cord here and you'll see that there's different color wires and what i do is i usually attach one of my meter probes to ground and then i check resistance between all the pins that shouldn't be black uh you know aren't connected to black wires and if i get a real low resistance that i can tell that i usually have a short so once I get that, um, you know, I, again, I start looking for something obvious and then I've shown you in different videos where I'll connect a benchtop power supply to the one that's shorted and put a very small current limited voltage through there. And I'll either use the little thermal camera to see what gets hot or I've even got my laser if I need to get into to very specific areas. Um, but in this case, none of that worked. And that's why I thought I'd show you just a different repair. And this is uh, gonna be a bit more manual. But um, in this case, it is the blue wire that was shorted to the black wire. And um, that means that there's a problem on the negative 12 volt line because blue is negative 12 volts on this power supply. So now what I do is I either use uh, really sharp meter probes, but I actually prefer this. I actually prefer to take other probes that have clips on them and then put uh, these little DuPont wires from the Arduinos in there. And the reason for that is that I can just kind of get in here with a lot more dexterity and you can actually punch in here and just it's a little hard to see, but I'm grabbing on both sides of the different of the uh, capacitor and looking to see if they're shorted together, you know, and if they are, I'm going to get a beep. So what I've kind of found is that this method allows me to go around the board and just kind of stick it in tiny areas without scratching anything or damaging anything. Um, you know, these things are relatively soft and I just come around here capacitor by capacitor and looking for it. And I've actually already found it. Um, so over on this side, it's one of these two, but um, if you come in here you can see that i've got the beep so now i know that that capacitor is shorted so what you do um to start with is you take your little side cutters like this and you cut it and you lift you can see where i lifted one side of that capacitor right there up and then you go back and you do the exact same test so um in this case i'll use my thicker probes but in this case i'm going to clip one on to the uh to the negative 12 volts. These are kind of chunky for this operation, but I can clip this on here and clip this on here and I've got no connection and uh, no short. And then I can tell you from experience that when I uh, power this thing up, this motherboard will actually boot. It was this thing preventing it. Now, um, you could get away with just leaving this capacitor off and a lot of people say power supplies now are better than they were and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm gonna try to replace it if I have it and then I'll take a crack at this now um these capacitors the deal with them for those of you who don't know is when they die they fail short and they cause a short on the whole motherboard and they're all getting kind of of that age so what i tend to do is um i will replace if i have them i'll replace all the ones of the same type and then what i'll do back in the day when i used to um sell custom computers the my suppliers would actually do what they call burn-in test on a system before they would ship it to me. So if I would order a bunch of parts and I had them assemble them, uh, they would do a burning test where they would leave it on for 24, 36 hours. And so I'm gonna do something similar to that where I'm actually gonna power up the motherboard, let it sit for a while and make sure nothing else shorts. And then, um, you know, and then we'll kind of go from there. Okay, so I've got the Hacko desoldering gun heated up over here. You could use solder wick or, you know, even just a plain soldering iron to get this out. It's not too bad, but I do try to heat these motherboards up as little as possible. So I'm going to flip this thing over and make sure I'm going for the right hole. And then uh, I'm going to actually add a little bit of solder on there. Now I've already lost it. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a little bit of solder on there to make it a little easier to remove. So we're going to go here. This is just the cheap soldering solder that comes with those kits and I already fell out actually. So we're just going to suck that out. I don't 
don't think I actually got that straight through, but I can clean that up. So yeah, actually no, it's straight through. Yeah, I can see through that. Great, so uh, while I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and do this thing. I don't wanna lose this capacitor because I do need the value of it. Um, this is a little bit bigger, so this might be a little trickier with the tip I have on here to desolder, but we're gonna try it anyway. We're gonna put a glob of new solder on there. Then we're gonna put this on top and let it heat the whole thing up and then pull. Uh, do the same thing on this side. Put it up, let it all flow through you. Get it, and then take this thing on the other side. Hey, there we go. All right, not bad. All right, so um, I found my tantalum capacitors. It actually took a little bit of doing, and what I'm probably gonna do uh, after this video is over is just find all the ones that meet the, uh, the sizes that I have, and I'll mark those and pull those. But for now, um, we're just gonna go ahead and do this one. They are polarized, so you wanna be careful putting them in, um, otherwise you'll just destroy the capacitor again. Uh, so when you look at them here, the side with the little line on it right there in the plus is positive. And uh, in this case, the board was marked as positive. So you can see positive is over here on what would be kind of the bottom left of your screen right there like that. So we're gonna put that one in there. And then um, I also had some of these I had some Chinesium uh, 2032 battery holders, and this one was actually an old Radio Shack one, and uh, it seems like it's pretty good quality. So um, they both seem to fit, so I think I'm actually going to just go ahead and use the Radio Shack one and put it in here. Even the little standoff holes kind of line up okay, so I'm going to put that in there and we're going to solder this thing in. And there you have it, one vintage motherboard saved from the scrap heap.